What is a hydraulic actuator? It's not much different than the pneumatic actuators we talked about in the last episode, episode 66, but there are a few key differences. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. Let's see what we can learn. Just to remind you, as I explained in the pneumatic actuator episode last time, a rodless actuator has an extend pressure that comes in one side, pushes the rod with the piston, and it has the extend exhaust, and that makes it extend a certain amount of stroke. And then in, in return, it does that on the way back with the retract, and it has a stroke, and it has a retract exhaust. While the principle of operation and the motion is the same, there are definitely some differences between pneumatics and hydraulics. The biggest difference, the primary difference, is that where pneumatics uses air, hydraulics use liquid. To answer the question of why liquid rather than air, I'm going to turn to my good friend and colleague, Devin Hyatt, who is a specialist in fluid power, which encompasses pneumatics and hydraulics. Thanks, Devin, for joining me. Glad to be here. So what can you tell me about this so, question? Yeah. So hydraulics have been around a long time, um, and because it was first discovered that if you pump a whole bunch of liquid into uh, a closed space and you keep pumping it in, that eventually it'll explode. <laughs> and that is because um, uh, most liquids are not very compressible, not like air is, right? Um, you put a few drops of extra liquid into, uh, 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 into a closed space, uh, you're going to start uh, expanding that space and it's going gonna, it's gonna to move. Where if you pump air into a cylinder, well, the cylinder will hold it um, and keep it inside um, and not change its volume but the, because the air compresses and the density increases and it gets smaller and smaller as the pressure goes up. Uh, fluids uh, aren't as compressible as air. So, uh, for example, in hydraulics, you can use water or you can use oil, uh, both of which have different compressibility factors, but under 5,000 PSI, they're, they're negligibly compressible or, or what we call incompressible liquids. And uh, therefore, we can use a pump to shove a whole bunch of oil into a cylinder and create very high pressures very fast without a lot of energy. And uh, therefore, hydraulics can produce much higher uh, amounts of force for a lot less energy than pneumatics can. And so there's just a few uh, summary bullet points of what Devin said. So do the hydraulic actuators also have single and double acting options like the pneumatic ones? Absolutely. Uh, case in point, if you think of uh, a farmer's tractor, you know, uh, uh, with a loader on it that picks up bales of hay. The actuators have to go both forward and backwards um, in a precision way. So double acting is simply means where you can put oil into the cylinder on either side of the board. Mm -hmm. And so you just have more uh, directional control valves um, uh, that are larger and, and more complicated to be able to get the double acting um, capability. Mm, okay. So are there also uh, other hydraulic actuator types like the pneumatic ones that include the rod, the rodless, the rotary, the gripper? Absolutely. Um, there's, there's not a rodless type. Uh, rod, rodless is specific to uh, a stage like actuator in, in the pneumatics world. Um, but there are many varieties, as you can imagine. Uh, there's telescopic uh, mm. type of types of hydraulic actuators. There are um, double rod actuators. Um, I mean, this guy's a limit on, on, on the on the number of designs, um, but certainly there are very large grippers. You typically don't have actuators that operate as small as pneumatics do. So applications where you do use a pneumatic gripper mm -hmm. are to pick up very tiny things, bottle caps, M&Ms, things like that. Where you'd use a hydraulic cylinder, a hydraulic actuator, you're picking up a barrel of oil. You know, you're gripping a barrel of oil, or you're you're picking up a load of hay, or something much larger that requires more force, and therefore these act types of actuators are typically uh, much larger than pneumatic actuators. I've heard that there are hydraulic motors as well. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. So there's two kinds of, of hydraulic actuators generally, just like there are in pneumatics, linear uh, actuators that are go that are cylinders and piston bore based with a rod extending out and in. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are rotary actuators, and uh, we call those hydraulic motors. And they're not electric motors. They're not diesel engine motors. They are um, 
shafts that rotate because hydraulic fluid is being pumped into the uh, into um, the back of the shaft and it's pushing on a whole bunch of veins or a whole bunch of um, cylinders which are causing that shaft to turn. So you're using hydraulic power to turn those motors. Got it, got it, thanks. Yep. So I'm assuming there's also ISO and NFPA versions of hydraulic actuators like there are for the pneumatic actuators. Yep, absolutely. All right. Enough said. <laughs> and what are open closed versus closed loop hydraulic systems? So uh, an open system is is uh, a broader in application. That is where you have a hydraulic reservoir that is open and breathes. So um, let's say you have a forty gallon reservoir, and you dr you you connect a hydraulic pump to it, and you draw out of the reservoir the hydro hydraulic fluid that you need for your application to actuate a cylinder or, or turn a motor, hydraulic motor. As that reservoir uh, re rele uh, releases fluid, air is brought in through a breather at the top of the reservoir to fill in the extra space, right? Um, and then as the fluid is uh, sent back to the reservoir after it's been used or uh, in the retraction of, a, uh, of an actuator, then that, uh, reservoir fills back up again and the air is pushed back out through the breather and uh, that reservoir is is um, you know being cleaned by a, a filtration system and protected from the outside world not unlike the oil in your car engine is protected so um, that is an open uh, hydraulic system um, then you have a closed loop hydraulic system where instead of having a reservoir you and a, and a hydraulic pump, uh, a standard hydraulic pump drawing from that reservoir. Instead, you have a recirculation pump. And what the recirculation pump does is it draws hydraulic fluid through its back and pushes it out its front to go run the hydraulic motors in the system and supply pressure to the hydraulic system. And then that oil simply recirculates through the same hoses all the way back around and goes straight back through that recircul uh, that um, circulation pump. So there is no hydraulic reservoir. It's a closed system. There's no air being introduced into the top of the reservoir. There's no um, reservoir being uh, filling full of air and then, and then being pushed back out again. It's a closed system. There's absolutely no um, uh, place for contamination or air to get in, into a closed loop system. They're very commonly used in mobile hydraulics. Um, uh, where you're turning a lot of hydraulic motors, for example, and as that oil is expended through the motor, it can just recirculate right back around and right back through the hydraulic pump. Mm -hmm. So when would you actually use hydraulics over pneumatics? Um, uh, from a theoretical standpoint, you would use it any time you need to ensure a, a constant force. Um, Pneumatics, you can have pressure drops uh, and uh, because of the compressibility of air, fluctuations in pressure very easily. And uh, if you need to guarantee a constant high force, then uh, hydraulics are, are good for those applications. Also, uh, hydraulics can produce much greater forces than pneumatics can for a lot less energy. Uh, and then, of course, in applications that are extremely um, uh, uh, have a lot of vibration, a lot of shock involved, um, certainly pneumatics can absorb a certain amount of force, but there are applications out there where um, you need um, to be able to handle maybe a thousand PSI spike because the, the, the hay bale landed on the loader and it, mm -hmm. you know, it shocked the system. So uh, hydraulic systems can handle high for not only higher forces and higher speeds uh, with those higher forces, but they can also handle, handle higher shock. Um, the disadvantages, however, would be... Um, Hydraulics are a lot dirtier. Uh, obviously, you have to change the oil every so often. You've got to filter it, just like you do with pneumatics. But um, but uh, but you've got to you got to change the oil and get really dirty. If there's leaks, uh, they can be a significant higher safety hazard because you're dealing with PSI. PSI is much greater than you deal with pneumatics. So safety is a, a thing to consider when using hydraulics over pneumatics. Um, and then, uh, of course, if you're dealing with a lot of uh, things like food or uh, pharmaceuticals or, or, or whatnot, um, a, you, you might uh, consider pneumatics or electrics over hydraulics because you can't have dirty oils and things in, in that environment. 
Thanks, Devin. As always, you are a wealth of information. I'm glad I asked. Thanks for having me, sir. Until next time. As with the pneumatic actuators, the hydraulic actuators also have other system components that you need to include in a system in order to make the actuators actually move. So you need to provide some liquid flow to that actuator. And with hydraulics, this is either an engine or a motor plus a pump. Then you need to control the fluid to the actuators, and that's done with uh, valves and flow controls. And then you need to make sure that liquid is clean, and you need to filter it, and you need to regulate it. Now, the pneumatics has a lubrication in there. Don't need that with the, uh, with the hydraulics, since you already have all that liquid in there. And then we have some pros and cons. The, the pros, really, with the hydraulics is that high force-to-size ratio, and Devin talked about that earlier. They're shock absorbent. They can absorb that shock. Devin also talked about that. Hydraulics are great for mobile equipment, and it's really because of that shock, but also because there's already an engine or a motor on the mobile equipment that can then also run the pump that runs that provides that uh, liquid flow to the actuators. And then they're just relatively simple. Maybe not as simple as pneumatics, but they're definitely simple. Uh, the cons, you know, they wear out their short life cycle and uh, again, we're back to that fluid quality maintenance and they uh, have a low efficiency and the, and the leaks are particularly messy with hydraulics because of the, uh, the oil and, um, and the liquids. Uh, they're low on their accuracy scale and then again they have limited cylinder positions, a lot like the pneumatics. You can really only go to a couple positions. You can't go to any position along an actuator. I hope that helps. Reach out to us at this email address and website here. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. We're always happy to help.